you're reading from the book of Genesis. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fertile and multiply and fill the earth. Dread fear, or you shall come upon all the animals of the earth, and all the birds of the air, and upon all creatures that move about on the ground, and all the fishes of the sea, and to your power they are delivered. Every creature that is alive shall be yours to be. I give them all to you as I did the green plants. Only flesh with its lifeblood still in it shall you not eat. For your own lifeblood too I will demand an account. From every animal I will demand it, and from one man in regard to his fellow man I will demand an accounting for human life. If anyone sheds the blood of a man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has man been made. Be fertile then and multiply, abound on earth and subdue it. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of the flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and you, and of every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The word of the Lord. From the heavens the Lord looks down on the earth. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. Let this be written for one generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, and from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The, Lord down the, the children of your servants shall abide, and their prosperity shall continue in your presence. That the name of the Lord may be declared in Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples gather together, and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. And he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
we three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the first written being Mark, uh, it's the most direct and straightforward. And in this uh, passage this morning, uh, this is one of the most significant passages. Uh, it could strike one as uh, Jesus has an identity crisis. Huh? Who do people say that I am? Who really cares what people have to say? They're often wrong. <laughs> uh, and he says, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others the prophets. All wrong. All wrong. Jesus is none of those. But Jesus says to the disciples, and he says to us, who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Christ? Well, our faith tells us that he is the Son of God, the Lord and Savior. He's up there on the cross right there, right up there. Because he's the only one who died for our sins and took our guilt upon himself to Calvary and rose from the dead. Jesus the Christ. He's the only one. Not, uh, again, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not uh, Hare Krishna, Confucius or anybody else. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did that. And that's why we confess him as Lord and Savior. So, but Peter, it shows you how the devil works. The devil attacks our strength. We often think he attacks our weakness. No, he attacks our strength. And Peter, given the keys, you are Peter, you are the rock upon whom I am going to build my church. And Peter confesses Jesus, uh, you are the Christ. And then he began to teach them, the Son of Man, is going to be suffer greatly rejected by the elders the chief priest and the scribes in other words the religious establishment as usual as usual turns against jesus and that's that's a fact that's true the religious establishment turns against jesus christ because they see a threat to their own importance and their own significance and their own power. And there's nothing that angers an establishment more than someone who is perceived as a threat. And Jesus Christ is a threat to their authority. Because if you remember in the Gospel of Luke, The people say he teaches has one with authority unlike the scribes and the Pharisees because his authority is he's the son of God that's why he's the son of Almighty God and he you know, it says he's going to be killed and he'll rise in three days. And Peter takes him aside and begins to rebuke him. You read the Gospel of Matthew, again on the road to Caesarea Philippi, chapter 17. Uh, Lord, don't let this happen to you. 
Pete is really saying is, don't let it happen to me. Don't let it happen to us. Uh, this is a, a, a subtle display of self-interest because what happens to Jesus is going to happen to the disciples if you're a follower. In other words, don't go to Calvary. Don't go to the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Because that's what the devil does. The devil attacks our strength. Because if he can defeat our strength, we don't have to worry about our weakness. So who better to attack than Peter? And that's what he does. And Jesus rebukes Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. He's not saying St. Peter is the devil. He's not saying that. But Peter is using, uh, Satan is using Peter to be an instrument to get Jesus away from his mission. And what is his mission? Like I've told you many times, in this beautiful church of yours, not mine, yours, is that cross up there with the Blessed Mother and the beloved disciple. And you really should never come to this church without looking at Jesus Christ on the cross. That's what Satan never wanted to happen. Don't go to Calvary. Turn away from that mission. Turn away from that. So that we would still be in our sins. We would still be in our guilt. That's, that's what it means. And Jesus says, get behind me. You are thinking, not as God, but as human beings do. And this is, this is profound. This is profound for us. I mean, this is not just some kind of uh, 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 pulpit pabble that comes out. It might be from me, but not from Jesus. Um, who is Jesus Christ for us? Who is Christ for you? Who is Jesus for you? And everybody's got to answer that question. That's the, the question for the institution and it's a question for the individual. Who is Jesus Christ? And what does he mean? And do we think of him in human terms? Or do we think of him as he truly is? God and man. God and human so that he's our Lord and Savior. That's no idle academic question. It is a question that must animate our life by the way in which we live every day. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and I hope he is, What does that mean in terms of your daily living as a disciple? Final point. Jesus Christ refused, rejected the idea that he wouldn't go to Calvary. And every Christian every Christian, every Catholic, certainly, every Catholic. Each day, we're asked to go with Jesus Christ to Calvary. We're asked to pick up our cross and follow Christ. What is your cross? 
I have no idea. I have no idea. But everybody has a cross to carry. Some big, some small. But when we unite that cross, whatever it is, whatever the suffering is, and you may not even know what it is today. Don't sit down the road. We unite it with Christ. It brings us closer in love to Almighty God. Brings us closer. So whatever your cross is today, whatever it is, please know you do not carry it alone. You carry it with Christ. In Christ and his cross with yours. Is, it may not seem so at the top, is a tremendous blessing. So, once again, following Jesus, we don't want to think as human beings, although we are. We want to think with the mind of God. And thank Almighty God for the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us please stand for prayer.